chapter 7, verses 16 and 17. Yes, sir. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst anymore. Preach, preach up. Anytime. Situation. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my first video of the year. Actually, it's not my first video. I've already filmed like two videos already. I wanted this to be the first video of the year though. I wanted it to be. Yeah, happy 2017, happy new year. 2020 is around the corner but we ain't gonna think about that girl we ain't even gonna put you there so this is a vicky vibes because i haven't done a vicky vibes in forever and i'm so sorry i kind of have to be like in the mood to make a vicky vibes i kind of have to be in the right space in my brain and i just wasn't myself and another reason why i didn't do a lot of vicky vibes last year was because i was like periscoping all the time so i felt like i was already giving you guys vicky vibes all the time but i really wasn't because i wasn't uploading on youtube so that's my bad if you don't follow me on periscope or on instagram i do instagram live now that instagram is trying to steal periscope's thunder you know i do those so you guys can keep up with me on a regular basis because i'd rather be more candid with you guys on my phone um but because i know you guys like vicky vibes i'm gonna keep doing them they just won't be as frequent as like periscopes or whatever actually i'm probably not even gonna do periscopes anymore i'm probably just gonna stick to instagram live because instagram live doesn't have as many creepy people okay ain't nobody asking to see my titties on instagram so first i'm gonna use my uh where is it my tatcha spray which i'm almost out of because like it's my favorite i love this spray i used it so much last year that i'm completely out of it Come on, baby. Last year was an interesting year, um, to say the least. I'm using the LA Girl Pro Prep um, foundation primer. 2016 was not that bad. It wasn't awful. It was just not good. Like it wasn't my favorite year, you know? Um, and I feel like a lot of that has to do with myself. Sometimes you have to be broken down to be built back up. I lost my strength in 2016 and this year I'm getting it back. This year I'm gonna use the LA Girl Pro uh, coverage foundation and I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of my Too Faced Born This Way. You're gonna come to a point in your life, especially if you're an adult, where things are just gonna test you and you're gonna have to learn valuable lessons um, about yourself, about others, about love, about family, about everything, everything, just everything. You're gonna always be learning, right? Um, it's just a matter of how you handle those lessons that you're learning and how you deal with the issues at hand like what do you do when things go wrong um and that's always like a test of your character it's a test of your faith it shows you who you are it shows you like how strong you are you know what i'm saying and that's kind of like what 16 2016 was for me i had to learn how to handle my situations properly and i also had to learn how to express my feelings I noticed that a lot of people, when they make these chit chat, chit -chat videos and stuff, they kind of get into their personal business or their personal feelings and things like that. And there's not really a lot of positivity or resolution to problems. They kind of just talk about the problems and then people are like, oh, you're so real. And then it's like, okay, but I still don't feel good. So I never wanted to come on here and make a video like, and be like, hey guys, I don't feel good. And then you'd be like, oh, I don't feel good either. And then we just don't feel good together like you know like i wanted to make something that was going to be positive and uplifting and last year i was not in that space like i want to have some kind of resolution some kind of solution to offer you guys so things that i learned last year uh i learned how to adult last year if you don't know me or you don't know my story you don't know my story i got married in 2014 and i moved away from my family my family lives in texas all of my family lives in texas and i moved with my husband and um, I don't have any like biological family here. You know, I live a thousand miles away from my family and my friends that I grew up with basically. 
And this is my first experience ever having to like completely change everything about my life and get used to a brand new environment. Like, of course, I grew up, you know, having to change schools and stuff like that, getting new friends and everything. But having to, you know, find your way as an adult is a lot different than your teenage years. With great power comes great responsibility. I have to be a little bit more responsible with my time and my money and just everything, you know. Um, so learning how to, learning how to adjust to that was the struggle last year, like learning how to adjust to being in my own adult, which I mean, I got married in 2014. So it would seem like I've kind of already had this under control, but last year, um, one of the, one of the things that I'm most proud of about last year was moving into a home that, you know, I helped purchase me and my husband purchased a home for the first time. And homeowning is a lot different from renting. It's definitely better than renting in my opinion, but it's a lot of work. And so it just kind of was a kick in the pants for both of us. It was like, okay, you know, are you really ready to be an adult? Like, do you really have your stuff together kind of thing? So, you know, that was one of the struggles of last year, just trying to keep up with, you know, everything on top of everything. It was hard, but it definitely is a learning process. And we kind of had to give ourselves a little bit of grace because we are young. We're a young married couple, you know, so it's not like we have every, we're supposed to have everything figured out because that's definitely not the case. It's just learning how to give yourself a break. Like I had to give myself a break. I was beating myself up a lot last year and just being really hard on myself because I felt like I was supposed to have so much more figured out already. And it's felt like I was doing everything wrong. Well, I'm using Studio Fix powder to set my under eyes. Um, I had to be very vulnerable last year because I went through a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> Not unfortunate events, but it kind of just, because I feel like it has to do with adulting and just getting older in general. I'm so used to shutting people out and, well not shutting people out, just not letting people, you know, see me struggle, not letting people see me not be okay. And so I was so used to that, that when I wasn't okay, I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't want to, I didn't want to open up about my issues. And so I would bottle everything in and I would, I was like a feelings hoarder. I wouldn't let anybody see me feel, you know, because I wasn't talking to anyone, because I wasn't asking for help or I wasn't getting any help from anybody because I wasn't letting anyone help me. I was kind of like isolating myself and putting myself in a box. I felt like I was in a cage, yet I was on display at the same time. Does that make sense? Like being on YouTube, I mean, I've always kind of felt like that because I'm a preacher's kid, so we always feel like we're always in the spotlight all the time. I'm used to feeling like that, but it was a little bit more of a pressure because of YouTube, because I I kind of do have my life like out there all the time. So, well, because I'm so used to being so self-sufficient and like, I feel like it's a lot, it has a lot to do with having, you know, an African-American mother who, if you have an African-American mother, they always say, now when we go in here, don't you ask nobody for nothing. Don't you say nothing to nobody. If somebody says something to you, don't you talk back. I, that's how I was brought up. Like, you don't talk back. You don't, you don't ask no questions. You just do what you gotta do. I have hit bottom on this click stick. Mind your business. Get out of grown folks business. Don't ask nobody for nothing. You know, don't be a burden to people, that kind of thing. I just was never the kind of person to ask for help or to ask for anything because I was taught not to ask for anything. Um, but now that I'm older, I've realized that I can't do everything on my own and I have to learn how to trust other people, to trust God. To, you know, you just have to learn how to let go and not be so controlling all the time because that was me in 2016. Trying to be controlling, try to make things happen for myself and not wanting to ask somebody for help, not wanting people to see me in a state of vulnerability. Growing up, I tried to avoid conflict as much as possible because I don't I don't like conflict. Nobody likes conflict. Nobody likes bad stuff happening to them, right? So when bad things would happen or if situations would come up, I would either run from them, go the other way, or I would just not talk about it, not deal with it and push it to the back of my brain and be like, that didn't happen, you good. Basically, that's how I live my life. Like I live my life in denial for so long that now I'm dealing with all these things that I was denying myself, you know, the access to. Like I was like, access, denied. When things went wrong, I wouldn't feel anything. Like I would be like, okay, and 
access denied you can't you can't get to me now that i'm getting older and things are starting to get to me it's like ugh, feelings now i'm like tearing down those walls and trying to not to build them up again when things go bad so learning how to deal with my feelings head on and like how to cope with you know feelings like feelings like i get ang anxious feelings depressed feelings like any kind of feeling like i would never i never used to accept those feelings i always kind of push them under the rug but now i have to like deal with them i've been using this new uh cover effects powder and it's so bomb but i went on sephora today and it sold out so you guys might not be able to try it out actually i'm not going to use this i'm going to use Another powder that I think you guys will like. I'm gonna use the LA Girl Pro Powder. That's what I'm gonna use. And this powder is like super lightweight, so it won't like give you flashback or make you cakey. Yeah, I just, I felt like last year I was tearing down walls. I was really like opening up to myself, which was hard to do. And I had to open up, you know, to the people around me. So like people who I really considered myself really close to, um, like, you know, like my really, really close friends and Cameron and even like my in-laws. A lot of people have issues with their in-laws. I don't have issues with my in-laws. Um, it's just, you know, when you leave your parents to go to somebody else's parents and have to kind of like open up to them and you don't really know them like that, it's kind of weird. And it wasn't that I didn't like them because I love them. It's just, you're not the people I grew up with. You don't really know me for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know the ugly me. You don't know the, so it's kind of like I had to, open up in that way i had to let them see the ugly me i had the ugly cry in front of them and i had to you know like it's that kind of stuff you have to open up and it happens over time you build trust over time i was watching this video of this guy and i talked about this on twitter and on periscope but it's this guy he was talking about um millennials in the workplace they just they struggle with life in general because we're so used to having everything you know quickly like we were used to instant gratification so things that take time like relationships and um, character building all that good stuff that we don't like things that take time we don't like it so we avoid it and then we end up depressed because we don't have strong relationships and things like that but that's because we didn't want to open up right that's what the dude was talking about and it makes so much sense because it's like you know we get in our feelings we get quiet we start you know shutting people out and then going to social media and ranting to social media about all of our issues when really the people we should be talking to are the people we have problems with you know it's just that kind of thing where we just don't really think about how we are making it harder on ourselves and that's how i was last year like i was like making it so much harder on myself um this is Too faced dark chocolate soleil i love this bronzer that's that's a part of finding yourself though is like you know, learning how to cope with negative feelings, learning how to cope with adversity, how to how to deal with it. Like, it's never going to be an easy process and it's not going to be a quick process either. It takes time. And over time, things will happen to you and situations will happen to you where you get uncomfortable. That's life, you know, and you can't run from those situations. You kind of just have to learn from them and learn how to deal with them in a healthy way. Feeding yourself things that are gonna make you stronger. It's kinda like, you know, the more you work out, the more muscle you build. So it's like the more you go through stuff in life, the more strength you're gonna have to build up emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever. Um, so this year I was like building on that. It had to happen um, so that I could be strong enough for 2017 so I can slay. But because I was struggling so much with adulting and just dealing with myself and my feelings and everything like that, I was really hard on myself because I've never been this weak before. I was, I never been this weak. I've never been broken down so much to have to grow. So it was uncomfortable for me. And because of that, I was like really beating myself up. So my self-esteem, my, my confidence, my value, I just felt like I wanted to give up. Like all of, all of that feeling was like really taking a toll on me emotionally. And so then being creative and trying to create content, it just wasn't working out. Especially because I was frustrated with YouTube in general because of the lack of sta stability in the YouTube world. Like I just felt like it was so unmotivating. So everything was just not on par for me. Plus all the crazy stuff. I promise you guys, like if you guys don't believe in like um, mind control and how like the atmosphere in the earth is being altered by technology. I took a conspiracy theories class in college. So I believe in this kind of stuff like weather control, mind control, basically 
yeah, you know, the people with the big bucks doing too much with their power. I feel like there was something going on in the air with the waves and the frequencies and the chemicals and just the, a combination of the food being GMO and chemtrails and all this stuff. You can look this stuff up if you want to. It just affects human behavior, like brainwave behavior. And I feel like it's what made people crazy last year. Like people were going insane last year. I've never seen so much hate and anger and frustration in one year. And that on top of everything that was going on in my personal life, I just wanted to like jump out of a window. Oh, I'm almost out of my pencil. I'm running out of products. That's how you know 2016 was good to me beauty wise because I found a lot of holy grail products that I really love. I definitely learned patience with myself, patience with other people. Have you ever heard that? There's like that phrase, it's like humble yourself or be humbled. I was humbled last year a lot. Not that I wasn't already humbled. I don't feel like I'm a, like I'm a conceited person, but I definitely got humbled last year a lot. And that required a lot of patience. And I've always known that I didn't have patience, but last year was like, okay, bro, like, yeah, you don't have patience. You gonna get some. You gonna learn today, okay. <laughs> I learned that I needed patience from a lot of this stuff. I didn't actually get patience until like the end of the year. Um, when I got Gigi, I never thought I would be a dog person. Like we had pets growing up, but I never was attached to them. Like they would die or they would like be given away or we'd sell them and I wouldn't feel a thing. But like with Gigi, like I've like really grown to love her. It's probably because I have to take care of her on my own. So it's not like I have anybody to rely on to take care of her for me. Like she's mine, you know? Um, and throughout everything that I've went through this year, I just didn't want to take it to take care of it. I didn't want to take ownership for it. I just didn't want that responsibility, you know? But with Gigi, it's like, I don't know. I willingly took that responsibility head on. I don't know. She kind of like taught me patience in a way that I never thought I would learn it. She's like my child. Like <laughs> dogs really are like children, just so you know, just in case you were thinking about getting one. But I don't know. I'm so thankful for Gigi because like she really helped me. Like I didn't think she would help me that much, but she really did. I love her. I learned this year how to let people in, how to let people in my space, how to let people in my life, um, in my heart, I guess you could say, um, and kind of like relate to people more um, by letting them know that I'm not okay. Or I had a friend who was going, actually a lot of my friends were going through stuff last year and anything ever happens with any of us, we talk about it, which I've never had friends like that where you know, things happen and we talk about it. Like prior to me getting married, when I had friendship issues or drama or whatever, I would just, like I said, brush it under the rug. I wouldn't pay attention to it and I wouldn't let it affect me. We all kind of had to lean on each other because there was just a lot going on in the year. And I had to, we had to do a lot of talking about real issues, real things going on that I've never had to deal with before. I've never been around people who talked about stuff like openly and honestly, and was just like, hey, like, I see you're going through this. You don't have to do this alone. And that's why I'm super grateful for everybody in my life because it's like people who will reach out to you, that's that's always a good thing. So I learned how to better express myself with Cam because of all of the things that were going on. Um, it kind of forced me to talk to him more about stuff. Um, not that I never really talked to him before, but we never really had anything serious, super serious to talk about. Now we did. Last year we had a lot of serious stuff to talk about and he... Like, I mean, just took all of those problems with open arms. Like, and that's why I freaking love him so much. Like, he's just everything to me because he would like fight for me. Like, I just, man, I'm not gonna cry. To know that people like really love you enough to care about your problems. It's like, you love me, bro. That's why I love you. I learned that I do beat myself up and I don't need to be so hard on myself. I learned to ease up on myself. Like last year, like little things would go wrong and I would freak out. And it's just because I was, I felt like there was so much going on that I couldn't control, which is why I kept cutting my hair because that's the only thing I could control. But it was just like so many things were out of my control and I hate not being in control of stuff. So when things would go bad, I would just have at it. Like, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I would cuss 
myself out like which the lord has delivered me i'm delivered but i would i would go in on myself which is so unhealthy so unhealthy i do not recommend that anybody ever does that because that's like the worst way to handle adversity is to go in on yourself and with that i had to just learn faith and having faith in general building my faith okay sorry i had to go find some tweezers like ASAP Rocky. I also want to talk about like good things that happened in the year because the year wasn't all bad, okay? It wasn't all bad. Number one, my one of my biggest accomplishments for the year was, you know, moving into my home. And that was a huge deal for me because I had never done anything that big before. To me, the coolest part of that was being able to share that with my family and friends and them be genuinely happy for me, like, you know. We had a housewarming and everyone that we invited came. To have more than what we expected show up is like a huge deal to me. Um, and the fact that I even invited people to my house, like I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a hermit. Um, and I kind of don't like people in my personal space, like in my personal bubble. Um, and that's, you know, just a part of me not wanting to be vulnerable and open with people like that. But the fact that I invited people to my house, they all came and I didn't want them to leave. Like that was a huge deal to me. Um, and that was one of the best memories of the year was the housewarming. Like just, it felt really good to have just so much love and like just, just so much love in the house. You know what I mean? It really set the tone for my home. That means a lot to me and it made me feel so good just to have those people there. Like. I don't care what anybody says. You can have as many followers as you want on the internet, but people in real life, if you don't have people in real life that you can like call family and hang out with and invite to your home and they support you and love on you and care about you, like that's what really matters. Not that you guys don't matter, but I don't feel you, you know? And there's something about people's energy and their presence near you and around you, which is why one of my goals for this year is to like, have more meetups and see you guys more often because when I don't see you guys, I don't feel you guys, you know? I don't feel the love, you know what I'm saying? So I wanna be able to feel it. I see it, but I wanna be able to feel it. Um, another one of the highlights of the year, of course, was getting my dog, uh, my baby, my G. I love her so much. If she wasn't sleeping, I would pick her up and kiss her. She really taught me how to love something that gets on your nerves all the time. Um, how to just, be a little bit more caring and loving. She just, she taught me how to like really like get out of my feelings and get out of myself and do something that I have to do every day. Um, and because I work from home, you know, I need something else to do other than sit around and be on the computer, you know what I'm saying? So she really opened up my world, opened up my horizons because she's just so cute and she does the funniest things ever. Another thing that was like really stand out to me was having the meetup. I had a meetup in Chicago uh, last year and it was super lit. Like everybody who came was super nice and fun and loving and like, it was just like really good time. So like I said, like being able to meet people in person is so much more of a gratifying feeling than just seeing people like your pictures and comment. Um, I'm actually already planning something for this year and I hope that you guys are excited. I'm planning on doing more of these. If this one goes well, I wanna do a lot more of them. But if you guys are in the Chicago area, I'm going to be having a uh, live tutorial, Vicky Vibes beauty kind of event. Um, I guess you could say, I don't know the name of it yet because I haven't made the flyers or anything for it yet, but it will be next Saturday at the Matt Nordstrom, at the Matt Counter Nordstrom and the shops at Northbridge. I'll put the, like all the information that you need in the description box about it. So you guys should slide through and come see your girl. I will be doing a live, like kind of like a live tutorial, kind of like a live beauty thing where I tell you guys about my favorite products and all of that. So it's gonna be really awesome. Um, and I just get to, can't wait to hug you guys and take pictures with you guys. I'm so excited. And like I said, if that one goes really well, then I wanna do more, like, do more meetups around the country so i'm using this contour palette uh by black radiance it's a true complexion palette i'm using the highlight shade but and then lastly as i finish up with my highlighting and stuff lastly my goals for 2017 
is um since last year I lost my strength this year I want to be stronger than ever like I want to like just kill the game I want to slay I told you guys on Instagram that 2017 is my slay year so I definitely want to slay for no reason like last year I spent so much time in sweatpants with my hair not done and looking a hot mess we're getting our groove back this year I also want to get off the internet and do real things not that I'm gonna kick YouTube to the curb but I definitely want to do more in-person events I want to do more traveling and doing more stuff with my brand other than just sitting in front of a camera or on a computer making videos this is LeBron's um, but yeah I want to get off the internet and do more things in person um, outside of the internet touch is my love language so obviously I want to be able to um, experience that with my following I didn't really do a bad job taking care of myself physically but this year I do want to be more physically fit in shape pick up where I left off with my working out and I want to like eat better and just get my health together you guys don't really know about my personal health um, because I don't really talk about my health, like any health problems that I have or whatever. But I do have some things that I want to work on that I'm going to keep to myself for now because I don't really want to talk too much about it because it's not really the place to do that yet. But I definitely want to work on my health and get my health in order. I'm going to go to the doctor this year and actually get professional advice on some things. This year, like one of my phrases is give God something to work with. I feel like sometimes when we want something in life, we kind of like... We don't really prepare ourselves for it um and by prepare i mean like we don't we don't really like put the work in to get the things that we want so last year i did a lot of complaining because i felt like certain things that i wanted or certain places i wanted to be at at a certain time just wasn't happening and so i was like well what's wrong with me why am i not getting this why am i not getting that and it was because I wasn't really like preparing myself for it. You know, I wasn't making a conscious effort to work as hard as I possibly could to attain the things that I wanted. So this year I'm giving God something to work with. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be motivated. I'm going to inspire and, and motivate myself. So this year I'm not going to, you know, pity myself and whine and complain. I'm just going to get stuff done and give God something to work with. You know what I'm saying? Setting goals for myself and, and meeting those goals and actually checking them off and, and consciously making an effort, being more intentional with everything that I do, especially with YouTube, because one of the things I've noticed about YouTube, and I know I'm talking a lot, but I want to kind of get all, all this out. One of the things I've noticed about YouTube for me anyway, is that when I first started YouTube, I wasn't intentionally trying to make this a job. I wasn't intentionally trying to do this as a career. I just wanted to do it because I liked it. But now that it's a job, I have to be way more intentional, especially because YouTube is so saturated now and it's populated with tons and tons of really talented and amazing people. So it's not that I'm less than because of those people, but now I have to be more me than ever. I can't just do what so-and-so is doing or do what somebody else is doing to try to be as popular or as cool or get the same um, opportunities as them or get or even get opportunities that I think I deserve. Like in order to get those opportunities, I have to be myself. Um, and I have to really push myself to be the best me that I can be. And so this year I wanna do that, especially with my YouTube channel. Um, be committed and more motivated to be me and to do what I do best um, and do it because I love it, but also do it intentionally um, and be more intentional for you guys. Y'all are the viewers. Y'all are the ones who actually make the difference. So um, I have to be more intentional with you guys and that's what I'm going to do. Um, me and Cam have already started making a plan for you guys on what we're going to do this year. Ish lit. Last but not least, I want to make sure that I am not being hard on myself. I'm getting older. I'm 25 now. If you guys don't know, my birthday was last week. Turn up. 25. Being 25 now, I've learned to be mature. And sometimes being mature means asking for help, seeking help, getting the help that you need. Like, if you need help with something, get help. There's nothing wrong with needing people, you know? And I think a lot of our generation has this problem where we feel like we don't need people i can do this on my own you know i got me i'm gonna be independent whatever um but you need people don't ever put yourself in a position where you need people but you don't have them because you've neglected them you know what i mean so i'm gonna let myself be a lot more vulnerable and that's okay but still be strong and vulnerable at the same time so finding that balance 
is what I'm working on this year. Um, journal more now. Um, I write things down. I want to be more in person with stuff. Like I said, I want to kind of come off of the technology and do things more tangibly. So I'm like actually writing things down in a notepad, um, writing my goals down, journaling. I'm actually like, you know, trying to get on my phone more and just stop doing everything so virtually because you get lost in the sauce on the internet, you know what I mean? Or on your phone or whatever. I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but I have a whole lot more goals that I that I really want to do. I wanna travel more. I wanna go out of the country this year, which I'm gonna do next month, so I'm excited. And I wanna just really enjoy life outside of these four walls that I've blocked myself into, you know what I mean? Um, and do everything I can, well, I ain't got no kids. But for the most part, that's basically it for my video. Thank you guys for sticking with me and loving me and supporting me and all your comments and your likes and your messages. They don't go unnoticed, I promise. Even if you've DM'd me on Twitter or Instagram, I check my DMs. I just don't respond to them because I get so many. Every like so often, like every couple weeks, I'll go through my DMs and read them. And I just love seeing you guys' comments because you guys are so sweet and generous all the time. And I appreciate you guys for that. Thank you guys for being victors. We are going to stay strong. One of my favorite little sayings is I am a victor I am not a victim so I will not be a victim this year I will be a victor this year because that's what my name means is victory and we gonna be we gonna be victorious this year okay like we say our name is okay we are not going to be victims in 2017 Okay. I will talk to you guys in my next video. Be sure to check the description box for more information about the meetup that I'm having next week in Chicago. If you want to come, there are only a certain amount of slots open, so be sure to RSVP if you want to come. I need you guys to do some homework for me. One, I need you to tell me what kind of videos you want to see in 2017, and I want you to tell me one thing that you want to do in 2017 that you've never done before, or like a goal, a big goal for you, you know? I want to see what you guys have going on or whatever. Any questions you might have about my outfit, what I'm wearing, my hair will be in the description box, of course, and that's it. But yeah, I will hopefully see you guys soon. I will talk to you guys later. I love you guys, and that's it. Say bye, Gigi.